What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, a.k.a. The Venom Blog. And this is another quick episode because one thing I don't want to show any images for, I just want to mention it because it's our friends over at the Venom site. And uh, they actually got exclusive look at concept art from the Venom movie, designs of the character that were never used. And this is something I really want Sony to work with, like Titan Books or someone on. I want an art book of the Venom movie. I want to see all the ideas that didn't get made and put on screen uh, because I think that would be very fascinating. This movie has been tried, you know, they tried to make this movie so, for so many years and they did so many you know, drafts of it, the writing, uh, directors come and gone. We'll definitely do an episode on the Venom movies that could have been. Uh, but we'll probably wait to do that after the Blu-ray and DVD come out, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. But for now, I don't want to show any of the exclusive artwork, uh, concept art, because it is exclusive to the Venom site, and I don't want to step on those guys' toes because they're really awesome, and I definitely consider them a you know family, uh, you know, because they're out there. They've been for years before me doing this show a year ago. They've been out there for years talking about Venom on their website, and they do a podcast and everything. So I'm going to put a link down below to the concept art. Check those guys out. Make sure you visit their site. Follow them on Twitter and social media. They're very very awesome. And check out the concept art there and let me know what you think of it in the comments down below uh, because there's some in interesting stuff stuff that did not get made and put into this movie some good some bad uh, but I always like seeing the world that could have been it's always kind of fascinating to see it especially after a movie whether I really love it or really hate it or you know in the middle or whatever um, I do like to see that the the worlds that could have been when it comes to these movies so definitely check it out and let me know your thoughts on it down below and the other thing I want to talk about is Venom by now, because obviously when you're watching this, I'm on bed rest. You know, I'm I'm been you know recovering and stuff. So I want to hear your thoughts on this, uh, because as of now recording this, Venom is number 84 in the top 100 grossing movies of all time. Uh, movies that have made the most money based on what they cost to make to what they've earned, and uh, they're in the he broke the top 100 list, and he's in 84, and he's probably by the time this is all said and done, if he gets up to like 850 million dollars, he might jump ahead from 84 to like you know 70 or 60 something uh, and that is insane to me none of us thought this movie was gonna we a lot of us hoped big time that it would do really well but to see it do this to be in the top 100 and to be at 84 now and only a couple million away from beating Daredevil, uh, or not Daredevil, Deadpool, I'm sorry, Deadpool, the first Deadpool movie, um, and a couple you know, million away from beating Spider-Man 2, which to me is my favorite Spider-Man movie, uh, because they took a villain I didn't even like, like Dr. Octopus, and they actually made me like the character and the arc that they went on in that storyline. I found myself really enjoying Spider-Man 2. So, um, you know, to see this movie going past that as far as gross goes, of course that doesn't mean quality. A lot of you guys will probably agree that Spider-Man 2 is a better movie than Venom. And I, like I said, I still gave the movie a 7 out of 10. It certainly had some problems with it, but the key things that got right, I really loved. And I know a lot of you guys too, and it was enough to get a lot of people to go give this movie a chance. The, you know, the views on YouTube when the trailers dropped were outstanding. Uh, and despite all that information that we were sharing on the show, we have such a small voice on the show, and we were out there constantly talking talking uh, rationally about this movie. We were like, hey, look, we're giving it a chance. I was critical on some videos that were out there. I was like, hey, I, this doesn't look that good. Or, okay, I'm not really feeling this. Hopefully they change it for the movie. And uh, I was very critical. I, I try to be very balanced, even though that this is called the Venom Vlog. It wasn't just to kiss the butt of the movie, but this was to re-explore a character that I felt like I connected with in a lot of ways, who had been through things like, you know, suicide attempts and, and really dark stuff, and I and came out on the other side essentially a better person in a lot of ways, and made a lot of flaws and mistakes, and like I said, he's the most relatable person, because he's someone who, like, if he lived, if Eddie Brock lived in the real world nowadays, he would be someone that, you know, like a bunch of people online would try to get fired from his job, because he would screw up, you know, the Sin Eater story, and then everyone would be like, hashtag fire Eddie Brock, you know, he would become another name in the tabloids and in the press of people like you know out to get his job removed from him and uh, you know just this witch hunt after the guy and I just felt like that made him very relatable to the world today and I wish they would explore that a little bit more in the movie uh, to show someone who was hunted down to kind of bounce back into the spotlight and redeem himself um, but maybe there's room for that in the second one or something you know we'll see uh, but I, I find this character really you know relatable to today and that's why I wanted to do a show on him and so it wasn't just about kissing the butt of the movie it was you know anticipating the movie but uh, over, you know, going over the full history of this character, and it was so, you know, great that even though we had a small voice, we rallied together a lot of fans, and a lot of people were willing to give this movie a chance. And I'm glad those people outnumbered the ones who were trying to, you know, hate on it uh, for no, you know, for seemingly no reason, or because Marvel didn't make it, or whatever reason they have for it. And maybe they legitimately don't like it, and they're just being very vocal. But I feel like a lot of them were being very hyperbolic because I've seen way worse movies than this. I've seen hunt, like thousands and thousands of movies in my lifetime. I 
I worked at a Blockbuster and watched over 50% of the movies in that store alone. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I've seen a ton of movies, and Venom is nowhere near the worst of anything I've ever seen, uh, even in the comic book movie world. So uh, you guys let me know. Are you happy for this, though, in the top 100? I'm so excited uh, that it's doing so well, and uh, this is the little engine that could. And even just to spite everyone out there who tried to stop it, it's so great to give them a reality check and be like, look, see, your opinion doesn't matter. You know, you're a, you you are out of touch with the average moviegoer, and you are out of touch with the person who who is willing to give something a chance. You have zero faith in you know humanity to go see a movie for themselves and not base it off of what you say. Uh, your ego has been deflated a little bit, and I think that movie that this movie deserves more points because it did that to a lot of people and it humbled them and it made them shut up. And there was a lot of people going like, oh yeah, it made good numbers opening weekend, but we'll see if it lasts. Boom, 55% drop, just as well as Infinity War and any other superhero movie out there. And then in China, oh, we'll see how it does in China. Boom, record numbers in China. And eh, that's just the first weekend. Let's see the second weekend. Boom, 55%. It's like this movie just keeps overperforming and it just keeps shutting people up. And I love it so much. Uh, there's, a, I take a little bit of joy in that. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys probably enjoy that a little bit more. Me, I'm just like, eh. Good. You know, I'm, I'm glad a lot of people are being humbled because that's what we all should be. We all should be humble and we should all just, you know, kick back. It's just a movie. Just, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. That's fine. But some of these levels people go to is just so personal and it makes no sense to me. And it was great to see all those people shut up and they're just watching this movie climb and climb and climb higher and higher and higher. So I can't wait till they announce uh, after, you know, Sony has their big party of celebrating how much money this made. I'm sure they're going to announce a sequel, probably a trilogy. I know Tom Hardy's already signed on for three movies, but they are going to I have no doubt they're going to get rolling on this. Uh, Ruben Fleischer's filming Zombieland 2 in January. He'll probably be done filming and editing the movie by, like, you know, next fall. And I have no doubt that they'll, they'll probably go right into Venom 2 at that point. And I hope they call the movie Venom vs. Carnage because that's what I want to see big time. Uh, so you guys let me know how excited you are for this and let me know what you think of that concept art over at Venom site. I really love those guys and I highly recommend you check out that page every day for new Venom content. They are very, very awesome. They're up on a lot of things, a lot more than I am. Uh, so definitely give those guys uh, you know a chance check them out if you haven't already because they're very cool thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and let me know everything you think about all this down below see you in the future peace